joining me and welcome to Something to Talk About. Happy New Year. I would like to thank you for joining me this evening. And if you have a question or a comment or would like to chat with our guest, whom I will introduce momentarily, please give us a call at 781-270-9199. Or if you think about it later on and you have a question, comment, or you have an idea or suggestion for a future topic that you'd like to hear on something to talk about, please feel free to email me at talk at bcattv.org. Before I begin tonight's discussion on networking, and no, we're not talking about wiring and computers, we're talking about human networking, the face-to-face -face thing that you kind of get away from through um, with technology. Before we get to that, I would like to thank the crew here, Corey McNeil and Colleen Moore, who have given up their Wednesday evenings to come here and give me a hand with the show. And I would also like to thank my husband, Paul, who's staying home for Daddy Date Night and also taking the Jeopardy test. So hopefully, dear, you do a great job and Alex calls you. And I'm okay with you going for LA, to L.A. for a little bit. So anyway, that's the logistics. And now I would like to introduce my guest for this evening, David Hunt, who is a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. and a networking expert. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Well, you're good enough to have a presentation and be willing to come on and talk with me. And I thank you very much for the chance to do that. Excellent. And hey, this is networking too. Absolutely. It all starts there. Okay, so let's start out a little bit with, can you tell me a little bit about your background, where you grew up, how you came to the greater New England refrigerator, um, <laughs> where you went to school, what you studied, and what made you start doing presentations on networking? Okay, well, I actually grew up in the New England refrigerator. I grew up, <laughs> I grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Um, my parents were both academics. My father taught at the Harvard Business School for um to de ump years. Mm. Uh, and I was always mechanically inclined. I loved drawing science, uh, pictures, galaxies. Designing and, your tie. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, not quite designing my tie, <laughs> but uh, um, I've always enjoyed technical stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and at my parents' urging, I took some drawing courses, loved it, ended up going to UMass Amherst, which is where I got my bachelor's. Oh, okay. Um, five college area. Oh, I was absolutely. a five college student too. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, I got my first master's at Carnegie Mellon University in okay. mechanical engineering. And where's Carnegie Mellon? They're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm like, I should know this. And then okay. I got my second master's in manufacturing management through Kettering University, which is formerly General Motors Institute over mm. in Flint, Michigan. Okay. And I did that via remote program. Okay. Uh, it was all on videotape, and the videotapes were the best answer to insomnia since Somanax. Oh, you know, okay. You're sitting there watching those. it, and you're like, oh, oh, how much did I miss here? Um, Get but the I, coffee. Yeah, but I managed to survive that, and I got my second master's, so I'm Excellent. officially a glutton for educational punishment. Okay. Um, my career has been in engineering in different industries. A professional in, student. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that too. Uh, but I <laughs> as have. As a mechanical engineer. As a mechanical okay. engineer, I've worked for automotive, I've worked for a chemical company, I've worked some in medical devices. A uh, preponderance of my background is in plastics, but not all of it. Okay. And I had learned about networking, and I really came to enjoy it. Because um, like, I actually met you through a networking group yes, over yes. in Wilmington. Yes, yes. Uh, and I really became convinced that this is the way mm -hmm. that people need to search for work. And the statistics bear me out. And depending on who you listen to, uh, somewhere between 60 to 80 percent of jobs are found through networking, not mm. through job boards, not through answering ads. They're found because you know someone who knows you well enough okay. to be able to put their reputation on the line to introduce you to someone who makes a difference. Okay. Now, do you see, I know we're already taking tangents from my notes. Sure. With that 60 to 80 percent, Yes. do you find that it's industry specific? It doesn't have to be. Okay. Because um, I'm just wondering like in more of the technical fields, because my husband's a computer software engineer, mm -hmm. and in his industry, well in his field of people he knows, it seems like when somebody leaves they bring their whole team over. Like if a manager leaves, They'll like recruit a couple of people, but it's like, okay, I was a psychology major and I worked in nonprofits and I'm not sure that happens as, as frequently. 
a lot so of people. So you see it in more in the engineering field? I don't want to say yes. I see that really at the high levels. You okay. get a, a new pre company president. Oh, yeah. And the company president will bring a gaggle of people over that he knows. Uh, not so much at the lower levels. Yeah, that's true. No, keep talking. Um, that's really not the case at the lower levels. Okay. Um, yeah, because a lot of the lower levels anybody can do, but it's the higher management, the st organizational structure that right. you kind of want somebody that's in your right mindset that you can trust and that you know. Right. Now, I will say this, a lot of industries, for example, the medical device industry, tends to be very insular. They'll only hire from within the industry. Okay. Uh, or even sometimes even a subspecialty. One of the, I don't want to say best ads that I've seen, mm -hmm. but certainly one of the most specifics was wanted urinary catheter design engineer, must have at least five years experience designing urinary catheters. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> Uh, that pretty yeah. li pretty limits your thing, yeah, exactly. but that's where networking can come in, because if you've got say ninety percent of what they're looking for, mm -hmm. and you know you can pick up that other little bit, yeah, if you can get someone to get around HR and mm -hmm. get into the person who can look at your resume, okay, and say, yo, this person's got some abilities, they've got some good accomplishments, mm -hmm. let me go talk to them. Okay. Now, do you ever find that circumventing HR could lead to potential problems down the road, like once you're hired? <clears throat> it can, but not normally. Most companies understand that networking is how things get okay. done. Um, if you've got an HR person who is really miffed that the person didn't go through channels, well, quite frankly, that's their problem. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking, you know, again, in my very limited background, when I finally did land a job after being unemployed for a while, I had sent, I had seen the job posting, sent it to HR, and then knew somebody at the company, sent them, and said, by the way, I notified HR, but if you can kind of get my name up the pile, that would be helpful. That's absolutely the way to do it. I mean, you don't want to step on anyone's toes, especially not when you're not in the door already. Yeah. Um, you want to go through channels. There are jobs I'm applying for right now where I'm going through channels. Excuse me. At the same time, mm -hmm. I am also trying to network my way to the people who can say yes because HR is a negative screen. They exist well, to they screen people out. They also get like out. for one job posting, I know, you know, back when I was searching, one <coughs> job posting would lead to 200 resumes. Oh, absolutely. And I don't know if, you know, the state of the economy the way it is if it's still that it's ratio. It's that if not worse. But how do you get yourself noticed? from a stack of papers yes, that high. Exactly. You need to get to someone who is willing to take a look at your background mm -hmm. and spend more than the 10 to 15 seconds that a typical human resources person will spend on scanning your resume. Okay. And that's done because someone they know hands them your resume and say, hey, I met this man or I met this woman. Here's their resume. They look interesting. Okay. There's a very good quote, and I wish I'd come up with it, <laughs> Uh, um, but it's not who you know, it's who knows you, because it is your Ooh, reputation with yeah. other people that gets yeah. you in the door. And to give credit where it's due, there's a guy named John Amico who spoke at the group that I found, networking group that I founded, uh, about that, and that okay. was his big motto and his claim to fame was the idea that it is your reputation with other people mm -hmm. that's what gets you in the door. I can know a gazillion people. But if they don't know me well enough to be comfortable okay. with introducing me to someone else, that's meaningless. Okay. So, you know, I've come from the, the line where I've been a little insecure in my professional career. So a mm -hmm. lot of times, a lot of people know me and know my reputation, but I don't feel confident enough going to them because I don't think that I've been very impressive. And it turns out that, yeah, they, they did really like me. So how do you interpret that relationship with other people? Can you, or do you just have to kind of wing it? Well, if nothing else, you just front out ask. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn is an enormously valuable tool. And what I have found is, is that there'll be a company that okay. I'm interested in, not necessarily with an opening position, but just I would like to make contacts within this company. Okay. I will notice that a person that I know know someone at this company. Mm -hmm. Let's say, in my case, I'm an engineer, knows an engineering manager. 
okay. or a quality manager. At like a target company? At a target or? company. Okay. And I will say, hey, you know, I noticed that you're connected to so-and-so. Would you help introduce me? Now, if they come back and say, well, you know, I don't really know you well enough or I'm not comfortable with doing that, okay. there's your signal. Yeah. And okay. then maybe you need to find another way in. Okay. But very often that will lead to, you know, sure, hey, no problem. I will happily send them a note and say, hey, you know, I know this person who seems like an interesting sort. Mm -hmm. And then you go from there. Now, back when I was job searching, one of these suggested techniques that I use was what they call an elevator speech, mm -hmm. which is basically explaining your background in 30 seconds or less, which is the time it normally takes for an elevator to go a floor or two. Do you still see an elevator speech as important, as it, an important tool? It's one of the fundamentals. You have to have a spiel that you can say with a reasonable amount of facility. You want it to be practiced. It's funny. You, on the one hand, you want it to be practiced so you're not stumbling your way through it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you don't want to have it sound like a canned thing that you've just memorized. So there's a fine Hello, balance. Hello, my name is Linda. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Um, one of the, some critical elements in an elevator speech mm -hmm. are who you are, um, your title, or the kind of thing that you're looking for, maybe a target industry or two. You've got to have something that peaks. Really what an elevator speech is, is it's nothing more than a marketing device to make someone say, wait, what, you saved your last employer $2 million? I want to know more. Yeah. Just pause the elevator. <laughs> yeah, pause the elevator. Let's talk a little more. Yeah. It's an opening. That's all it is. Okay. Just like a resume is nothing more than a marketing device to get an interview. An elevator speech is nothing more than a marketing device to get someone's attention so that they want to talk to you more. And see your resume. And see your resume. <laughs> or okay. maybe say, hey, you know, you said you wanted to work in thus and such industry. I know someone at thus and such a company. Would you be interested? Okay. Yes. Another tangent, you know, um, my elevator speech. Yes. I had mapped out with the areas that I had worked in, because I had, at the time I had worked in three major areas within the company. The, I saved the $2 million point, you know, right. said something significant about each one. And I said I was looking for a place that I, or a position that I could combine all of my experiences. Mm -hmm. Never thinking that I would ever find something that combined them. And would you believe I found the ideal job? Okay. Looking back at my elevator speech, it's like, hey, yeah, check, check, cool, this is really good. Mm -hmm. So it does work. Yeah, absolutely, it does, it does work. work. The current position I'm in now, uh, it's a part-time contract, but I got it mm -hmm. because there are a couple of people I know, and I stayed in touch with them. I would send them articles on occasion and say, mm -hmm. how you doing, et cetera, et cetera, and it turns out one of the principals of the company got a full-time job somewhere else, and he called me up and said, I can think of no one better suited to take over the engineering side of this than you. Hmm. Sweet. And? And so I'm in, <laughs> I'm in it now. As I said, it's a part-time thing. It's yeah. uh, slowing the financial bleeding, if nothing else. That's good. Um, and allows I mean, you to stay home with your kids. Allows me to stay home with the kids. Uh, it's enabling me to uh, keep my hand in things so that if someone says, well, how current mm -hmm. are you? At least I've got something to point to. Yeah. Yeah, because I did have a question, because in the presentation that you had sent me that you had just recently given, you talked about sending articles. Yes. And it's like, how do you find these articles that are relevant to the person that you're sending them to? You don't, you don't think of a person and then look for an article, generally. Okay. <clears throat> what I do is, is I get a gazillion magazines. Okay. And I'll flip through them. <laughs> Where do you have time to read them all? <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't read, I scan. Uh, uh, and then if I see a headlines. really interesting article, then, I'll, then, then, mm. then that's uh, idle time when the kids are asleep. But I'll see an article, for example, there was an article a while ago that I saw on ultrasonic welding of plastics. And Ultrason ultrasonic welding of plastics, okay. it's a way of taking two plastic materials and joining them together. Okay. And it forms a hermetic seal. It's, very okay. used, it's used a lot in, for example, medical devices. Okay. And in fact, it was in a medical device industry magazine that I saw this article. Okay. I immediately made it about a dozen copies and put a little cover note on it mm -hmm. and sent it out to 
the people that I thought of. I said, hey, I know these eight people in medical devices. They may be interested in this. I sent it to them, and um, I actually have custom printed up a little cardstock. It's maybe uh, four by six, and it just has my name and my address and my email on it. Okay. And I said, dear so-and-so, I just saw this article in thus and such a magazine. I thought you might be interested. Yours sincerely, David. And sent it off. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, I'll shoot him an email, say, hey, did you get that article? Was it useful? Oh, okay. Because I was about to ask you what your follow-up was with them. And usually it said, yeah, now, I do got... Do you have like a giant spreadsheet where you keep track of who you send what to and I have a three-ring binder. Uh, and a full-blown database. <laughs> yeah, it's a full-blown database. Uh, but it's one of the... It, you keep track. And that's one of the important things is you need to do is you keep, need to keep track of a log of who you contact, when... No matter how good your memory is, still write it down. Yeah. <laughs> and... Among other things, what's important is to know how you got to that person. Okay. So like in the little LinkedIn, draw the little connections right. of, you know. So, for example, okay. under so-and-so, I will have a little note how I got to that person, and it will say I got to that, I got to person B because I knew A. Okay. Or I got to person C because I knew B, and then if I look up B, it'll like know B, well, okay. I got to know them because I know A. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so you don't have the whole string. No. By the time you get to Q, that's kind of a lot. Yeah. Not to say that you never and it get doesn't, to Q. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a technically relevant article. And I'll give you an example. Yeah, please do. There, there's a magazine that I get mm -hmm. that is sort of Middle Eastern focused. Okay. And in it, there was an article several years ago about the Acropolis in Athens. Okay. And it was written from the perspective of the Acropolis itself as if it were keeping a diary of the history that's ruled around it. Oh, wild. It was a cool article. Yeah. There was a person I knew who was from Greece. Okay. I copied it. I sent it to him. He thought it was the greatest thing. Since sliced bread. <laughs> there was another person who I know, Portuguese. Okay. I saw an article in this, again, in this magazine, not all that long ago, about cork production in Portugal. Hmm. I figured, okay. hey, you know, why not? I photocopy it. Turns out he owns a cork farm in Portugal. <laughs> and, and the article was about his farm. No, <laughs> I don't think it was about his farm, but he thought it was very interesting to see that yeah. something that he owns and it has an economic stake in was oh. written up in an article. Cool. And that's an important thing is, is that networking and being memorable is not just about a dry article. It is about emotion. It is about how people feel. Okay. And if you can make someone feel good about the fact that you feel reached out to them yeah. and feel important and feel valued, because networking is like a bank account. You're okay. putting all these credits into it mm -hmm. against the day that you may need to draw from it. Now, most people are job searching, searching. They're already approaching other people with hat in hand. Okay. But in the ideal case, if even if you're job searching, you're not pinging every single person you know all the time. Mm -hmm with, hey, can you get me a job? Hey, do you know someone who you know that? Stay in touch with people. Yeah, you don't want to sound desperate. <laughs> right. Um, but you build up goodwill, you build up good feelings, and then you can approach someone and say, hey, you know, I need your help in contacting so-and-so. They will be much more inclined to say yes okay. than if you're just, hey, well, you know, so-and-so referred me to you. Can you help me? Yeah. What's in it for me? I yeah. think that was one of the, you know, when I was going to all the WIND meetings, yes. the networking meetings, it was, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to put a spin on whatever you do so the person who's receiving, or the entity that's receiving your connection is what's in it for me. Yes. It's a... V you know, whether it's a company that you're talking to or a connection, hey, I'm looking for a job. Can you help me? Well... I could, but what's in it for me, yeah. you know, type. Yeah. Most people are good. I mean, yeah. most people want to Oh, I understand that. I'm just saying, you know, to, to approach it with that mindset. Yes. To, okay. Now, I know in our email exchange before you came here. Yes. I'm going off on another tangent. I'm That's a queen fine. of tangents. We're having a conversation We're having a conversation. And these are my notes for all the tangents that I'm going to take. Okay. Now, one of the pet peeves that I had is the networking group has a binder so you can establish connections at the you know the target companies or whatever mm -hmm. now I once my name was in that binder mm -hmm. as someone who worked at company X mm -hmm. and there was a gentleman who was going to have an interview at company X and mm -hmm. he called me 
and he said, I'd like to know a little bit about the culture. I have this interview. I spent 45 minutes on the phone with this gentleman, mm -hmm. told him a lot about what I knew, mm -hmm. never <clears throat> heard from him again. He should have, at the very least, sent a thank you. And I think that's, that's what really set me over the edge was there was no thank you, no follow up. How'd you do? Did you get the job? Did you meet with these people? What did they talk about? You know, no follow up phone call. People think that they don't have time for the nice CDs, but it is the nice CDs that get you remembered. Um, in your ca case, for example, if I had contacted you and had a 45 minute conversation about someone that you knew or a company, yes. I would have sent a thank you note immediately to say thank you so much for your time. And then after the interview, I would have said, I had an interview, I talked with A and B and C, here's what happened. Um, and then of course, if I got the job or didn't, I would say, by the way, after the interview two weeks later, they said, thank you very much, but no thank you. I would have been happy with one note. Yeah. But it's important because yeah. then it makes you feel valued. Yeah, and then I'd be willing to do it again. Yes. You know, instead I'm just like, why am I wasting my time here? Yeah. You know, so that was that was a little one of of my major pet peeves. And mm. another, you know, networking thing was exactly that. We there was a debate, and I'm curious to know your stance on it. When you are finished with a job interview or a meeting with someone, just an informational meeting or a networking opportunity. Mm -hmm. Email or snail mail thank you note? Uh, email because it's faster. Okay. If you have something of value that you can provide, for example, you know of an article link. Okay. Send the article link th saying, thank you so much for your time. I learned a great deal. Here's what I learned from you. I mean, make it specific. Yeah. The more specific you can make, the more they think mm -hmm. that you're valuing the effort that they put forward. And then say, hey, you know, by the way, you had a picture of you scuba diving in the Caymans. I happened to see an article on scuba diving. Here you go. Okay. I went to one interview once where it was just that. The, mm -hmm. he, the person's entire wall was covered with pictures of him scuba diving. Wow. We had a great conversation. It's hard to not notice. <laughs> yeah. We had a great conversation about diving because I used to be a diver too. Really? Um, didn't get the job, but yeah. we had a great conversation. <laughs> and he probably remembered you. He yeah. or she yes. remembered you. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things in, oh, actually, yeah, let's skip ahead. You mentioned like a warm referral. What okay. exactly meant by a warm referral? A warm referral? referral is one of the gold standards, best things that can happen in, a, in networking. Okay. It's where you know, let's um, let's imagine there's a hypothetical person here okay. that I want to meet. Okay. And you want to meet the dust bunny. I want to meet the dust bunny under there. Okay. I know you. You know the dust bunny. Okay. Linda, I would really like to talk to the dust bunny. They have a area of expertise I'd like to know more about. Okay. They're working at a company that I'd like to try to get into. Okay. Could you please introduce me? And you being the kind-hearted soul that you are. Because I know you're going to send me a thank you note afterwards. Absolutely. <laughs> and so Sorry. <laughs> and so, what you do is, is that you write a note to them okay. to say, Hi, I would like to introduce David Hunt. He's a mechanical engineer. He is very interested in blah, blah, blah company. I don't know if you have any positions open right now, but he's a bright guy. He's articulate. He's mm -hmm. intelligent. He's dashingly, ravishingly. And he came on my show. And he came on your show. <laughs> and would you be, be willing to... Um, make a little time in your schedule have to talk to him, him and have yeah. a cup of coffee with yeah. him. Okay. That is a warm referral. Okay. As opposed to what other kind of... As opposed to a cold referral where I send you an email note and you say, yeah, sure, I'll forward it. Or a LinkedIn invitation where that just gets forwarded on with very little comment. Okay. So there's only warm and cold. There's not like frozen and... No, no. Well, a frozen one is, yeah, you know, go <laughs> is outside right now where it's eight degrees. Yes. Okay. Now how do you get these, you know, let's let's go back to how do you how do you start networking? Where do you start? Face to face. Uh, face to face is the new networking, which is again a quote I wish I'd come up with, but I didn't. And you have to go out, you have to meet people. And what are some ways of, of meeting people? Well, for example, there are official networking groups like WIND, Wednesday is Networking Day. There's mm -hmm. Actor Networking, 
Acton Networkers, which is a great networking group. Okay. Um, if you go onto the various event calendars, like Eventbrite, I think it is, okay. and search for groups, you can find a gazillion networking groups. Okay. And it doesn't have to be something that says blah, 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 networking group. Okay. It can be a trade group meeting. Okay. It can be a chamber of commerce meeting. It can be uh, a meetup club that happens to have a particular fan base a particular interest in which you have an interest. Mm -hmm. Networking is not just going out there and saying, I'm going to go get a job, dang it. So it's like socialization. It is very much socialization, but it's socialization. I have a social life, yay! It's socialization with a purpose. Okay. And the purpose in this case is to go and meet people and have a few, you know, hopefully half a dozen to a dozen, five-minute conversations with people where you talk to them and they talk to you, you learn about each other. It is not a one-way thing. Uh, very, it's like speed dating. It, it's like speed dating, exactly. And one of the best ways to open a conversation is say, hi, you know, hi Linda, I see we're at this blah, blah, event. What brings you here? Oh, I like that. And then that person talks about themselves yeah, for Toyota. a few minutes. No. <laughs> And then they will say, well, and what about you? And you say, well, hi, my name is David Hunt. I'm a senior level mechanical engineer. That's a perfect time to give them your elevator speech mm -hmm. okay. and say, I'm... And if they don't ask you, and how about you, you say, see ya. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't say see you, but at the same time, <laughs> no. you, underst you understand that they're, maybe they're not all that serious about it. Yeah, okay. So you give them your elevator speech. You give them your elevator speech. You say, I'm looking for it, thus and such a company. Do you have a business card? Here's mine. Yeah. And then, of course, now you've got their contact information. You can follow up. You can hunt them down. <laughs> and you need to do that within 24 hours. You need to okay. strike while the iron's hot. Before um, they forget who you are. Absolutely. One of the things that I Because they probably met, you know, 50 people that night. Right. One of the things you need to do is, is if they said something specific, a need that they have, okay. write it down on their business card. Okay. If they notice something about so you. So make sure you have your Sharpie with you. Exactly. Uh, if they notice something about you that's distinctive, mm -hmm. or they make a comment about something about you in particular. Like for example, tie. like my tie. My tie is covered with nuclear physics, theory of matter, radioactivity. It's a great conversation piece at a networking it event. Is. I like to wear this tie or several others that I have that are good conversation pieces. Mm -hmm. And what I will and do... And you can also talk about the other ties in your collection. Right. <laughs> but what I will do is, is that when I contact them and I'll say, you know, but we, we met at the blah, blah, blah event last night, blah, 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 parentheses. I'm the guy with the engineering tie. Okay. Now they know who I am. Mm -hmm. I had a great conversation once where I didn't have a tie. I was in a polo shirt. Now I'm a Freemason and okay. I'm perfectly happy to say that I'm a Freemason. And I went to this event, and the stars aligned right. I had my Masonic watch. I had my Masonic ring. I had my polo shirt with my Freemasons logo. And because I realized I was going whole hog, I put my lodge pin on my collar. Okay. And I'm at this event, and talking to this guy, and he looks at me, and he looks me up and down, and he says, oh, are you a Freemason? And I went, <laughs> what was I, your first clue? And I looked left, and I looked right, and I leaned in, and I stage whispered, what gave me away. <laughs> he laughed and laughed. Six months later, it turns yeah. out that for pure coincidence, uh, he knew someone that I wanted to talk to. I wrote to him and I said, we met at thus and such an event, parentheses, I'm up. the Freemason. <laughs> and, you know, the Freemason poster child. <laughs> uh, he knew who I was. Exactly, hey. I like happy ending stories. Yeah, but the point is is that okay. people remember details. People will focus on details. So it's nice to have something. So make sure you don't have spinach in your teeth. Yeah, yeah. don't have spinach in your teeth. Don't <laughs> have nose hairs growing out. Um, Ew. Don't have anything that's going to make people wish they had brain bleach. <laughs> brain bleach. Well, I, I mean, like that. No, I just, it's well, I mean, one of those catchphrases that, you know. And grooming is incredibly important. Um, on my blog, I have an essay called Done in Seven Seconds. And it talks about the fact that most people will form their first impression of you between seven and ten seconds. Okay. And that's enough time to say, hello, my name is, how are you? Yeah. And so you've got to, proper grooming. I'm wearing a jacket and tie. Mm -hmm. If you think I like this collar, you're sadly mistaken. But <clears throat> that you need to dress up. Watch your microphone so you don't rip oh, it off and sorry. strangle yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my wife would kill me if I was dead. Um, yeah. 
but you be pretty. but you've got to be careful how you dress, how you appear, mm -hmm. check for things like nose hairs, what have yous, uh, spinach in your teeth. It's a good idea, especially if you smoke, to bring a small little toothbrush and toothpaste mm -hmm. in to try to clean up your breath. Okay. Um, because smells, in particular, can just turn someone off like nobody's business. They're very memorable. Incredibly memorable. Good or bad. Yes. Mm -hmm tend to be on the bad side. Yeah. In fact, like uh, cheap men's cologne. Yeah. One of the things I talk about is the 24-hour rule. Okay. And the 24-hour rule for me is I love garlic. Now, uh, when I say I love garlic, I don't mean yeah, I like a glove or two. My idea of enough garlic will repel Vampires will stay away. Will vamp will, will repel a vampire two counties over. <laughs> okay. Understood. Um, I abstain from anything that's going to cause an odor in my breath, out my skin, odiferous emissions on the other end okay. for 24 hours okay. to make sure it's not in my system. Okay. If you like soda, and I like my seltzer water, okay. don't drink it before you go, not so much because it's odor, but because you'll be sitting there belching all the time. Yeah. That's what people will remember. And that's not really flattering. <laughs> they will remember the, per the guy who belched a lot, <laughs> not the person who had this great personality. And other yeah, it's those negative things that you always remember. Right. And you have to understand, people form impressions very quickly because it's hardwired into us. Okay. It's a survival trait. You meet another animal coming around a corner, you need to understand very quickly, is this potential prey? Is this potential person who's gonna have me for lunch? You know. Is this a potential mate? What? Yeah. It's instinctive, it's hardwired in, and there is a bias towards the negative because if you give someone, an animal gives another animal the benefit of the doubt, their lunch. Their lunch, yeah. So it's hardwired <laughs> to be no negative. There's no second chances. Right, you know, you're the gazelle <laughs> and the lion comes around the corner, hmm, I wonder about those teeth. No, you don't get the chance to debate that. Yeah. So there's a hardwired bias to be negative. You've got to overcome that. You've got to not have an excuse for the other person to make a negative ass assumption about you. Okay. Wow, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> Good clothes. Good grooming, it's not hard to remember. Yeah. But a lot of people do. A lot of people do, yes. Or a lot of people well, are just don't. unaware well, of that image yeah. that they portray. So. Now, okay, I already brought up one of my pet peeves. Yes. Because the whole thank you thing just really annoys me. Yes. Do you have a couple of pet peeves? I have three big ones. Okay. The first one is warm referrals. Okay. If you get a warm referral someone, you act on it within 24 hours, another 24-hour roll. Okay. You've got to strike, and you've got to strike while the iron is hot. There is no excuse, and I'm still pissed off at my nephew <laughs> because I, got, oh, I gave him a warm referral to another cousin of mine okay. on a different branch of the family because he was going to go visit San Francisco, and my cous other cousin lived there. And I said, hey, you know, my nephew is going to San Francisco. Would you be willing to be a contact for him? He said, absolutely sure. My nephew never called him. Okay. So if you get a warm referral, mm -hmm. you act on it. And of course, don't be mean or rude or anything like that. My second pet peeve is I do active networking. I believe in helping people a lot. But I get these people who will email me blindly, mm -hmm. and they'll send me, my re they'll send me their resume. That's pushy. Yeah, that's a little uh, borderline obnoxious. It's obnoxious. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to be the good, kind-hearted soul that I am. I won't bite too hard, and I'll say, sure, I'll look at it and see what I can do for help you. But it's pushy. Instead, yeah. say, blah, 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 nice to meet you, and maybe it's at the end. desperation. Yeah, at the end say, by the way, would you be willing to take a look at my resume? You can ask to send it. Yeah. Okay. Or, if you're talking, so approach this person first, acknowledge them as a networking contact, and right. then once you establish that relationship, then say, hey, look, can yeah. you help me in this regard? And a great way to do that is, especially if you're talking to a senior executive, okay. to say, I know my resume can always use polishing. Would you be willing to take a quick look at it and critique it for me? Okay. You're asking for advice, so you're not just you know, say, help me get a job. Okay. You may good, get good advice about it, and God knows I've gotten some good advice from that, that kind of technique. Yeah. And Especially again, you know, if you're still looking for work, right. it's like, okay, what, what's, what's wrong? And Why, the other nice yeah. thing is, is that if they're willing to look at it, and they do, it forces them to read it. 
which means that potentially they can say, hey, you know, I, know, I may know someone who may be able to use someone like you. And then the third pet peeve of mine is my name. I am a David. And I already made that mistake. Yes. I apologize. It's, it's no problem. But I am a David, not a Dave. If someone introduces, if someone has a name, Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Don't assume they go by Marge. And in fact, I was at a networking event and I saw a woman whose name was Marjorie and I said, by the way, do you go by Marjorie or Marge? And she said, Marjorie, thank you for asking. Um, so if someone's name says Michael, do not assume that you can go with, hey, Mike. Mm -hmm. It's rude. It disrespects them from the very first in moment of contact. If someone has Dr. Jacobson on their thing saying, hi, Dr. Jacob, it's nice to meet you. Oh, please call me buddy. Okay, but okay. it is. As long as you get that, that but foot it's, in the door. But it's yeah. better to start out to be more formal yes. and then relax it than assume the informality then and, you'll offend. You and then potentially offend. risk offending someone. Yeah, okay. Okay, now backing up a little bit. You mentioned in meeting people at mm -hmm. a networking event, determining whether or not they are a potential warm referral. You mentioned handing them a business card. Yes. If you're out of work, yes. how do you have a business card? Vistaprint. Okay. Vistaprint. But how do you well, know what to put on it? I mean, do you really want your home phone number or, or you know, your it, your address? You know, it these? varies depending on your level of comfort. Okay. Uh, my business card has my name, my title, uh, the one I'm about to publish soon, as soon as I run out of the ones I've got, um, actually will only have my cell phone number, not okay. my home phone number. I have a P.O. box as my mailing address, so that's what I put on mine. Okay. If you're not com give comfortable giving out your home address, just put your city, Marlborough, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, what you should also have on it are a few bullet points of things that you think might grab someone's attention. Okay. So in my case, senior mechanical engineer, I know this software, I have these skills, I've got this certification. In my case, I am a registered and licensed professional engineer, so my name is David Hunt, PE. If you've got an MBA, put that on there. If you've got a PhD, say PhD. I mean, that's always a very nice thing to <laughs> grab attention. Okay. It really varies on your comfortable, comfort level, but again, it's got to have enough on there. Yeah, do you put like a job title? In my case, it says senior mechanical, mechanical engineer. engineer. What if you're doing like a career change? What would you suggest? <laughs> it depends on how wide a diversion you're going. Okay. Um, if you're trying to shift from one similar thing to another, I'd still say what you are. Okay. If Just leave it off altogether. Or you may leave it off altogether. Um, okay. If you're truly trying to change careers in a massive way, okay. you may actually just want to try to put a matrix of your transferable skills on there. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a job title because no. I think that was you know when I was looking for work I didn't know what I wanted to do I just wanted to be gainfully employed so I'm like how do I write this business card if I don't have a title mm -hmm. and I was also not senior level so that further complicated matters so sure. I was just wondering what your plan on that it was. really depends on how far afield you're going from the from what you've done in the past okay. and if you're truly going afield then work with a few people to come up with a list of transferable skills okay. that you can apply from where you were to where you're going to. Okay. And then that's a th something that you can talk about. Your marketable skills. Absolutely. Because all this is is marketing. You are a product. You are selling yourself. Okay. Now some of the advice, I know I'm totally going on tangents. One of the other pieces of advice that was given to me was have something halfway between a business card and a resume, like a threefold pamphlet or something. Mm, I've seen those. I personally think they're kind of cheesy. Okay. Now, what I have seen is what's called a networking profile. It's a one-page document with a little bit of your resume uh, okay. and then sort of your skills okay. and then a whole list of companies that you're trying to get into. Okay. That's a nice document to have. And what would you use that for? That would be as if you're at a networking event and you managed to meet someone who's senior level or sounds like a really good contact. Okay. You could say, by the way, I also have a networking profile. Would you 
could I give it to you? And I explain, it's got a list of the target companies. Again, as I said before, people want to help, but you need to be able to give them something specific to help you. If you okay. say, I am a marketing person and I'd like to be a marketing person, woohoo, yeah. great. But if you can say, I'm a marketing person and I have an interest in these half a dozen companies, that's much more specific. Okay. People could focus on that and say, hey, you know, maybe I know someone there or I might know someone who knows someone there. Okay. Or they can always come back and say, hey, I know of a marketing position in this company, but it's not one of your target companies. Exactly. Are you still interested? Would you be, you know? Sure. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Now, um, we talked about sending articles mm -hmm. as a good way to stay on someone's radar. Yes. Now, I think in your presentation you talked about writing your own articles. Yes. Um, social media that is... That just like blows my mind because I'm like, what do you write about? Well, social media is all the rage these days. Okay. And anyone and everyone ha now has their own blog. I have my own blog. And in my case, I do a whole bunch of different things on it. But uh, some of the articles that I've written about are case studies from my background on problem solving. Oh, okay. If you have a particular expertise and you believe that you are one of the experts on it, start up your own blog. John Q. Public, you know, expert on whatever. Tiddlywinks. Expert on tiddlywinks, playing tiddlywinks, and start writing articles on playing tiddlywinks. Okay. And get a Twitter account and start tweeting out links to your articles on playing tiddlywinks. Hmm. Uh, search for other people. So you don't really have to publish, publish. It's just... No. Another okay. way to do it is, for example, trade magazines. Let's suppose there's an art, a magazine that focuses on playing tiddlywinks. Write a letter to the editor. Okay, bad example, but... Well, it, okay. you know, it, but it's a good <laughs> hypothetical example. Write a letter to the editor. Offer to write write a 500-word essay on you know, the aesthetics of doing this in tiddlywanks. Start to get published in that. And very often, a lot of magazines are desperate for material that's not coming from the same old, tired authors writing the same old, tired things. They want okay. fresh perspectives. And if okay. you can write entertainingly, you will get published. You will start to get noticed. Hmm. And not only will you get noticed, but it's another way that if there's the uh, act, it, it's resume fodder to say, hey, you know, I've been published. But if you're interested in the Acme Tiddlywink Company, you can then write the president after you've had three or four art articles published and say, hey, I just thought you may, might be interested. I think I'm pretty good in Tiddlywinks. I've had these articles published. Could I talk to you more? Could I set up an informational meeting oh, with okay. you? Okay. All right. Because I'm just thinking, you know, my background, where would I start? What would I write about? You know, so I think that's kind of when I had seen that on your presentation, I'm thinking, okay, what exactly does this mean? And where do you begin? Because mm -hmm. it just seems, you know, so vast, like the World Wide Web is worldwide. Yes. So well, this the noise to signal ratio is pretty high. But if um, if you can get noticed by people, mm -hmm. it, ca it can snowball. Okay. In a good way. In a good way. In a good way. Okay. Um, your tagline on your email just cracks me up. It says the best way to, f or the best place to find an out of out. I can't even say it correctly. <laughs> the best place to find an out of the box thinker is out of the box. Yes. And that was sort of a slight dig at the medical device industry. As I said, that's one of my target industries. Okay. And the medical device industry is notorious for only hiring people from within and then complaining that they can't get innovation. A lot of places that I have worked, okay. I, my best successes have come when I didn't know I couldn't do something, so I just went ahead and did it. Okay. And if you read a lot of quote-unquote thought leaders and articles by various uh, persons, you can find a common theme, which is, is that it is necessary to bring in people with fresh eyes perspective. And I've written about that. I've been published about that. I've mm. actually had people say, you're absolutely right. And I'm like, well, if I'm that right, why don't you hire me? Um, but the point was, is, is that if you're truly trying to find really fresh perspectives, you've got to f go outside the group of people who have mm -hmm. been staring at the product, for, at the problem for years. Yeah. It's like the forest tree scenario. Exactly. 
that's why I've been to some brainstorming classes and one of the things they say is that you can't just have all engineers or all accountants or all whatever. Get someone who knows absolutely nothing about the subject matter or close to nothing about mm -hmm. the subject matter and bring them in and they will ask the really dumb questions. Except they may not be so dumb once you take a step back and say, oh, that <laughs> won't work. Dumb questions, but do you know the answers to them? Yes. Or the answer may be, well, we tried that already. No, wait, we haven't tried that one. Hmm. And so it's really a, interesting. the whole point is trying to get people to understand that there are benefits to a fresh eyes perspective in today's hyper competitive economy. Mm -hmm. You cannot not be innovating. Okay. And also you have to you know, make no assumptions about your audience either. Yeah. You know, like they, I always joke, around, joke about saying the instruction manual mm -hmm. was written by the engineer who designed it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's always something missing where the, you know, no tools required always involve like a chainsaw or something, you know, <laughs> a sledgehammer. So, um, I have bad notes. You have a random walk approach to networking. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and how does the out-of-the-box concept tie in with the random walk? Well, the random walk is, is you never know who someone knows. Okay. One of the things I like to say is, is that a co a, someone's co-worker's neighbor's poker buddy might end up being the person that you need to meet. Don't simply assume that you as a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. only have to target other mechanical, other engineers. mechanical engineers or someone in the mechan in the engineering food chain. Kind of like the space balls. I'm your father's brother's uncle's former roommate. Yes, or, exactly or right. Whatever the and it could be someone's former college roommate that is the person you need to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, don't ignore the small people. Secretaries, especially receptionists, know everybody. And they're That's probably true. friendly with everybody or close to it. Okay. A longtime janitor in the company probably knows the CEO better than the person that you're trying to work for. Okay. Um, one of the things I have, which I have tried, and admittedly not with a great success, is trying to network my way in through the head of the cafeteria in a large company. Yeah, that kind of intrigued me. Because the head of cafeteria has to know the facilities manager. Okay. They probably know the finance manager. Okay. A few other people at high level, they have to because they interact with them as part of the business that they do with the company. And they know what they eat for lunch every day. Yes. <laughs> and they probably have a decent rapport with them. Okay. So if you can manage to make your way to one of the head chefs of the cafeteria of the company that you're trying to get into okay. and get to know them and have them know you, say, ask them, hey, you know, do you know the head of finance? Okay. Sure, I know the head of, you know, I know Bob, the head of finance. Mm -hmm. Well, could you possibly be willing, willing to pass my resume on? Okay. Now you're talking about foods, you know, the food service going in that way. You had also mentioned something about catering. Now, do you get a job for a caterer, so you go to these events mm. and, you know, kind of like, what was it, um, working girl, she crashes a wedding to meet the CEO of this company that she wants to go into? Yeah. You know. I don't know about working for one, unless that's something you, that you can do part-time, but certainly volunteering at events. I mean, go look at charities that you okay. like to do and look at companies. Very often, companies will brag about, we support XYZ charities. Okay. Well, contact the XYZ charities and say, are there some events that I could help work, especially if they're events that are... I'll hand out the name tags. Yeah, I'll, ha I'll hand out the name tags. I'll do something. They're always looking for volunteers. That's true. And if you can, excuse me, if you can volunteer and do it sincerely, yeah, um, it shows initiative, it shows innov innovative thinking, and as you're handing out name tags, you can say, oh, you know, hi, Mr. So-and-so, and, -so, and um, you can meet people that way. Mm -hmm. It's a good venue to do that. Uh, volunteering in general is a great way to show initiative and compassion and helping of others. And if you do it for a while at a place where you start to meet people at these mm -hmm. companies, you show, again, your work ethic. You can get to know them. If you've, you're volunteering at a soup kitchen and the director of 
director of marketing okay. also volunteers at that soup kitchen and you can establish a rapport over weeks and months it's not a quick thing yeah um, yeah, that's true. You know, networking isn't a quick fix. It's a, it's you're grooming a relationship. Yeah, that's exactly it. It is a relationship, but you can get to know people, and then you can say, oh, by the way, you know, I happen to notice that you've got a position opening in your marketing department. Mm -hmm. I, I am actually a marketing person, and would you be willing to help me get in? Mm. And by that time, they've known you. They've worked with you. They haven't just learned about you professionally. They've learned about you as a person. Because that's one of the big things that I believe is, is that anyone can be a good whatever. But if you're a a-hole in your mm -hmm. personal life, yeah. that doesn't lend well to being networking. But if you can show that you're a good, compassionate person, because you're volunteering. Because you're volunteering, you're volunteering and you're doing all their time. And that's the other thing is that once you land, you got to keep going. Because okay. if you land and then you quit, the person's going to say, hey, wait a minute. This person was just doing this to use me. Yeah. And they may not get you fired, but it's certainly going to sour your reputation. And it's definitely right. going to make them not want to help you again. Exactly. Because that was actually one of my questions. You know, how do you... You know, how often do people continue to network and how often do you continue to build these relationships when you are gainfully employed? Not often enough. That's one of the biggest mistakes in networking that people make is, okay. and there was a person that I know who said, hey, I just landed, thank God I can stop networking. And of course, my response was a face pop. I'm like, <clears throat> oh. The time to build your network is when you don't need it. As I said, if you're approaching someone okay. hat in hand, yeah. you're approaching them at the worst possible time. Again, it's like putting money in the bank. Right. Um, and if you do it consistently and constantly, and it doesn't have to be every week. You don't have right. to be going out there scouring magazines, looking for articles to send to people, but just, hey, yeah. I noticed this thing. Yeah. Uh, there's a person I know who- It's like who, heighten your awareness of your surroundings. Yes, and, okay. and touch people lightly every now and again. Hey, how's it going? If you know someone at a particular company, doesn't have to be your, your company, a company you're interested okay. in, and you hear of a massive layoff, contact them. Say, hey, I just heard of a layoff at Boston That's Scientific. Right. Were Are you, you affected? Okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Are you affected? Yeah. Um, if you're not affected, is there someone you know I might be able to help? Okay. If you are affected, well, hey, shoot me your resume. Um, I'll see what I can do. You know, let's have a cup of coffee. Let's, yeah. you know, let's sit, tell you what I can do. Okay. Now, we are just about out of time. We have like enough time for probably one more question. Sure. Now, I know that you had mentioned, um, actually, scratch that. What are your top three behaviors to avoid when networking? I think we may have touched upon those throughout our conversation. All right, number one, avoiding the three the, biggest mistakes. Avoiding the me, 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 me. Okay. It's got to be. I mean, yes, it is about you, but it's also got to be about helping other people as well. Because when you help other people, it makes them want to help you more. Okay. I would say the second thing is is being pushy, past persistent. Okay. Um, it's one thing to call someone a couple of times and say, hey, can we get together? You don't want to be a stalker. You don't want to be a stalker. Um, and then the third one, aside from, for example, ignoring a warm referral, I would probably have to say is not doing it at all. Networking has to be a lifelong activity because you may be secure in your job. Okay. You may think you're secure in your job, but in today's nobody's economy, secure. nobody's secure in their job. It can happen to you. Put money into your networking bank account now, okay. even if you don't think that you're ever going to need it, because you probably will. Yes, and you never know when that's going to happen. Yes. I like that analogy with the bank account. That is, that, that's good. I think I might borrow that. Well, so. feel free. Well, thank you very much for coming. Absolutely. And Thank you for I the opportunity. Keep you out too past too far past your kids' bedtime. No. <laughs> they'll probably be pretty cranky when I get home though. All right. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. And I would like to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening and learning more about networking. 
And I hope you enjoyed and had a safe new year. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And we will see you soon. Thanks and good night. Mm -hmm.